Okay. I think it's time to get started. 2.20. So I am Holly DeWolf, and I'm going to be talking about using remote tools or online tools for customer development. So I wanted to start with a poll. Who here feels like they've totally done enough customer development on their product? <laughs> oh wow, brave soul. Okay, for those of you who didn't raise your hand, shout out some reasons why you don't feel like you've done enough. What are some of the barriers? Fun? Hard to find customers, yeah. Others? Boring. It's boring. Don't have enough time. Last one. Sample bias. Sample bias. Can you explain that? Uh, being confined to the demographic that's available to you. Those are all very legitimate concerns and barriers to doing enough customer development and doing it continuously. And yet, we all know that talking to your customers one on one has great benefits for your product. There's entrepreneurial books that are full of examples of people who learned something they couldn't possibly have learned had they not been talking to their customers. In the next 30 minutes, I want to talk about some more efficient ways to do customer development using the internet. You can think about this as your new workout plan. Customer develop, making customer development a habit can be difficult, just like going to the gym every day can be difficult. For a lot of us, customer development can be a bit of a chore. Finding the people that you want to talk to that meet your target market that aren't your friends, scheduling time with them, meeting with them, leaving the office, fighting through traffic, all those things can be a chore, can be tedious. And the other challenge with making customer development a habit is that the reward isn't always immediate. Same can be said of going to the gym. Um, and so, like I said, in the next 30 minutes, I want to talk about some ways to make customer development a little bit more efficient. Um, like I said, a new workout plan, not a diet pill. I'm not promising you that you'll lose 10 pounds in two weeks just by sprinkling this on your food and doing nothing else. You're gonna to have to put a little bit of investment into tailoring some of these tools and techniques to you and your business. But the beauty is, once you get the hang of doing customer development online, you'll be able to turn experiments around a little bit faster so that you can get to that reward a little bit faster, really pack in those aha moments instead of waiting until your metrics tell you that no one's buying, but you don't know why. Using the internet, you can get closer to people like you never could before. You can talk to the person in Tokyo without having to buy a plane ticket to Tokyo. You can talk to the person across town who you never would have met if it wasn't for the internet, all from the comfort of your own office. But wait, Steve Blank, who founded the term customer development, he says I should get the hell out of the office. And I agree. There's a lot of advantages to in-person customer development, but there's also a lot of advantages in time and money doing it online. And ultimately, it's a trade-off for you and your business, for the learning that you're trying to accomplish right now, do the benefits of in-person customer development outweigh the cost and schedule savings you'll get from doing it online. I wanna take a moment to talk about semantics. Um, I'm a user researcher. Um, and there's a good chance that I'm going to be interchanging at least the words user and customer, if not user research and usability test and customer development. I recognize there's nuanced differences between all of those terms, and I really would like to discuss those differences with you, but let's just save that for over drinks later. Um, so that, with that, let's get started. Today I'm going to start with the actual meeting with your customer. Um, the, the online communication part of using the internet for customer development is obviously going to be a little bit different than meeting with your customers in person. Um, in person communication has had thousands of years to develop and online communication is in its infancy. So 
While there are benefits to doing customer development online, there might be some frustrations that you come across in the first time you do it online. So I wanna talk about things that'll make it a little bit more comfortable for you to do um, your meeting online. But unfortunately, customer development doesn't start with the fun part, the meeting. There's a lot of legwork that goes into finding your customers and scheduling time with your customers. And I'm gonna talk about some online tools that can help make that a little bit easier and efficient as well. Um, and even if you're lucky enough to have an established set of customers um, to go to, thinking about finding new customers using the internet um, can be important so that if you wanna test how a new user um, would onboard onto your system, you, have, you can have the ability to look out a side of your customer um, base or um, even if your customer base is small and you don't want to continuously go back to the same people, these techniques can uh, be helpful. So I've done hundreds of online engagements with customers, and what I can tell you are there's some seemingly obvious things um, to consider when you're doing it online, but after doing it over and over again, I've learned some techniques and tricks um, that will hopefully make your job a little bit easier when you go to do it the first time. Um, but I would absolutely, absolutely implore you to practice first before you attend any of these at home. Um, grab your partner, grab your grandmother, grab the person sitting next to you, just pretend they're not sitting next to you, and go through the whole engagement as if they were your customer. Um, and keep these things in mind. So the first is your greeting. With in-person meetings, with in-person communication, you meet somebody new at Starbucks and you immediately reach out your hand. Hey, I'm Holly, hi Susie, nice to meet you. Hey, how about this weather we're having, that kind of thing. But online, it's surprisingly easy to skip all over all of that when your first thing out of your mouth is, oh, can you hear me okay? Oh, you're breaking up a little bit. Oh, can we switch microphones? Those sorts of things. Um, and then before you know it, you've jumped into all of your questions you have for them. You never said what your name was. You never created that, um, that little bit of a relationship, that bond just by chatting a little bit about before you get started with all of the, the grilling, so to speak. Recording. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about why recording is important and some of the tools that you can use for recording, but one of the benefits of online communication is being able to have that recording to look at later. And I would recommend after the greeting, the next thing you should ask is, are you comfortable with me recording? And I usually say something to, hey, I'd really like to record this session. Um, it's just that myself or my team can review it later and it won't be shared publicly. I've never had anybody say no, but if they do, just turn off the recording and proceed with the session. Webcam. Um, I'll talk a little bit about um, screen sharing versus webcam. It's a little hard to do both, but if you're doing um, a straight up interview and you're not fo product focused in this particular um, bit of customer development, you want to use a webcam so that you can get the body language of the person that you're talking to. But with the webcam, there's some a little bit of dangers that you're going to run into if, you, if you're not familiar with online communication already. Um, you need to make eye, eye contact with your camera, which isn't necessarily where your customer's eyes are. So if you put your window of the, the customer's webcam in the bottom left screen, side of your screen, then you're not making any eye contact with them. They don't know if you're typing or if you're looking at your email or just looking out into oblivion. So at least pull that window closer to your webcam. And if your webcam's not like in your laptop, if you have a separate webcam from your computer, put something next to the webcam so that you're looking at, you know, even if it's your, a picture of your daughter or stuff to get a or something, so that you're making eye contact with your webcam instead of with your email. <laughs> um, Crosstalk, the, the whole um, uh, talking over each other, oh wait, are you gonna go, oh, let me go, uh, the kind of thing, that, and that's an issue in all communication, but it's exasperated online when you don't have as many of the body language clues um, to, to determine who should go first. Um, and with all customer development interviews, I try to err on the side of having your customer speak more than you do. And so that's even more 
um, important with online communication. So if they start to pause, give them a little bit more time than you would in a typical situation because it could be that they're in the middle of a thought, it could be that they've already completed their sentence, or it could be that the internet's lacking. Um, so just err on the side of letting them talk. And along the same lines, team etiquette. So online communication has the benefit of not having to hoard six people into one little cubicle to talk to the same customer. You can have those same six people come and listen in on, um, on the conversation, which is really beneficial to the whole team to kind of hear that emotion, the reason why, hopefully, that you're doing the, the, um, this communication in the first place. But talk beforehand with your team about some etiquette. I usually appoint one person and one person only to be the moderator of that conversation. And then um, at the end, it's understood that the rest of the team will get the opportunity to weigh in. So they'll say, hey, Sue, do you have any other questions, comments? Hey, Jim, do it round robin so that six people aren't trying to talk on top of each other and not sure who should go next. All right, so that's the, the communication itself. Um, I want to talk a little bit about logistics, which is something you don't even really have to worry about with in person, except for the logistics of getting to Starbucks. Um, so the first is your microphone and speaker check. That's an obvious one, hopefully, when you're talking to your grandma as if they're your customer. Make sure that your microphone and speaker levels are right. But also be um, cognizant of how to set those microphone and speaker levels in case they aren't right for the next person you talk to. Use headphones. If, you use your, if your um, computer has built-in microphone and speakers, that's great. But I recommend using headphones um, because when the, when the customer is talking, your speakers can sometimes pick up their voice and then record it back to them. And that feedback of hearing your own voice, believe it or not, is really distracting. Um, so just be kind to your customers. Use headphones and you don't have to worry about it um, being an issue. Okay, if you're screen sharing, if you're asking the customer to screen share or if you're sharing your own screen, I, if I'm going to be testing um, an early stage prototype where I know that it's a little bit buggy or there's some, like if it's only happy path and they start to go down the sad path and I'm like, oh, you got to come back to the page. And oftentimes I'll share my own screen um, so that I can take that control back real quick. But be aware that if you are screen sharing your own screen and giving them control to click through your screen, some tools don't let you limit the um, window that you're sharing. They, make, they force you to share your whole desktop in that case. Um, so just be cognizant, test beforehand, practice beforehand, um, so that you can see like where are you going to put your notes, where are you going to put your script, um, and that's important even if you're having the customer share their screen, because knowing kind of where you're going to put all of the windows on the screen so that the controls to the screen sharing application don't get hidden and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing, um, just practice that beforehand and, and get a good sense of where you want to put all of those windows on the screen before you're in the middle of it with the customer. This should go without saying, but all of your attention should be on this interview, on this customer development. So turn off your email, your Twitter, put your phone in another room. Um, but along the same lines is spraying up bandwidth. So I had the unfortunate incident where my virus scanner and my computer started running at the same time as in the middle of a customer development meeting. And that day was ha I happened to have crappy um, internet connection as well. So my computer system's going down, my internet's going down, and it was just a bad experience for both of us. So the more things that you shut down on your computer before the customer development meeting, the better that experience is gonna be for both of you. And then troubleshooting. So do you know what it looks like from your customer's point of view? Are you able to walk them through, hey, I can't hear you quite right. This is the button. The button for the audio check is right next to the, the chat button and you know, it's to the left of the big green icon sort of thing. So that you can talk them through if they're having issues with how do I share my screen? How do I do an audio check? Those types of things that you know beforehand what it looks like from their end. It just makes it easier to get to the meat of why you're there. Um, and then lastly, backup plans. Um, if your microphone and speakers goes down, what are you going to do? If their microphone and speaker goes down, what are you going to do? You're going to jump on a phone call? Uh, if, 
If your internet or their internet's not working correctly, I can tell you I know every internet cafe within a block radius of me and all of their hours and exactly what their Wi-Fi passwords are, um, just in case my internet's being crappy. <laughs> Um, and then the last thing I want to touch on for the meeting itself are the meeting tools. Now there are a lot of tools out there and I actually put a whole breakdown of all of the tools that I've used and some of the considerations um, I use when I pick a tool. I unfortunately can't tell you exactly which tool to use, but I can tell you sort of the things that you should consider. Uh, the first is ease of download and install. Being from the tech industry, using Skype, using Google Hangout, those are a given for us. But for most of the community, they don't actually have those things downloaded on their computer already, unless they have a family member that you know, lives across the globe. Um, so paying attention to how easy it is to install or download that tool will help you out so that you're not wasting like 15 minutes of your meeting just trying to talk through email to explain to the person how to download Skype. User-friendly, these tools are a reflection of you and your business. Um, even if it's just subconsciously, your customer's going to um, connect a bad experience with this meeting to you and your product. So pay attention to the, the user-friendliness of the tools that you use to meet with them. International dial-in, um, definitely not a must, but if you're working with a community that uh, is not as tech savvy, having um, a 1 800 dial in can be a little bit less um, intimidating than using your microphone and speakers. And it's also really good to have a, as a backup plan um, if you're talking to countries that the broadband is, is not as reliable, then a lot of uh, customers will appreciate having a telephone number to call in. Recording, so I did say I would talk about the benefits of recording, so like I said, uh, talking, having our team listening to the pain or the pleasure that your, that your user is going through while they're going through your product or explaining their hard problems is just invaluable. Um, but recording is also really invaluable for if it's just you. Uh, if you're frantically taking notes, because you don't have the recording to um, fall back on, then you're not gonna have the opportunity to really pay attention to what your customer is saying, listen, instead of trying to write, and, and ask those follow-up questions. Particularly in, in interviews and, and usability studies when you're trying to get at that qualitative data, that why, the follow-up questions are gonna be really important. And if you're too busy just trying to transcribe, um, then you won't be able to ask those really important questions. Screen sharing. So I actually include the telephone as one of my meeting tools for a remote customer development, and it's a really good low-tech solution to meeting that person in Tokyo, if necessary. But I like to encourage everybody to use screen sharing tools, even if you don't think that you're going, that you're not like showing your product at that particular meeting. In those early stage customer development meetings, when you're talking about the pain points and how they currently solve them, um, you can ask them to share their screen to show you exactly what their tasks look like today so that you can, it's a little bit easier than asking the customer to say, okay, can you tell me, can you remember exactly the way that you do this? If you actually have them share their screen and go through it, you can get a lot more out of it than you wouldn't otherwise. Um, and then lastly, cost for all businesses, startup or otherwise. Um, so cost is really important. Like I said, I have um, a list of all of the tools that I've used and kind of these features. Um, and I went through a lot of detail on my website on, on all of the things that I consider along these lines. This is a really bad eye chart, um, but the, it's on my website. So if you're really interested, um, we can talk later too about what I find interesting about each one of those tools. All right, so we've talked about the fun stuff, meeting with your customers, but like I said, unfortunately, your customers aren't gonna just show up on your inbox and say, hey, we're gonna meet at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Um, so let's talk about finding your customers, and I have good news and I have bad news about finding your customers online. There are a lot of people on the internet, that's the good news. And the bad news is there's a lot of people on the internet. 
Um, so if you don't think about who your customers are and where you're going to find them, it's easy to get lost in a sea full of people. My husband loves these crane machines, um, but to, he doesn't get a chance to play them really often, and so to maximize his time and his money, he always finds the easiest toy to grab and goes after that one. And nine times out of ten, he gets a toy out of that machine, but nine times out of ten, it's like the crappiest toy in that machine. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, if you don't have a problem with talking to just anybody about your product, you like you just like to talk, then by all means, grab the first person you find online and talk to them about your product. Um, but, chances are because you're here, you're looking for your target market and how they use or think about their hard problem in your product. And so in that case, I recommend giving some thought to not only where you're going to find them, but who they are. Um, and the reason why I say this is because I know from experience, if you don't have a relationship with the person you're asking for help, you're going to want to ask, give them about double their hourly rate. Um, there's, I don't have statistics on this, it's just my own experience. Um, and so if you're asking a complete and total stranger for their time, be prepared to, to double their hourly rate. If you're asking your grandmother for her time, she'd probably pay you to meet with her. Um, but the point is that the, the stronger your relationship is with the person that you're meeting with, the more psychological, sociological factors come into play that will get them to help you altruistically. So you want to get to a point, if you don't have the money, so I'm not saying that incentives are bad, I'm just saying that if, if you don't want to pay that, that double the hourly rate, then you need to strengthen the relationship. So I know this from experience. I um, was working for a math tutoring company. They wanted to do some usability testing, and in the past I had really big success with sending out a bunch of Craigslist ads um, in a bunch of different towns and saying, I'll pay you 30 bucks if you give me 30 minutes of your time. I got a whole bunch of answers, so many so that I could narrow down to the target market I was looking for, schedule all the meetings, and all was good in the world. With this math tutoring company, the incentive budget was much lower. Um, but I tried the same thing, just with a lower incentive. I still got a whole lot of responses. I still got a lot of people in the target market I was looking for, and I still scheduled a whole lot of meetings. And then 90% of the meetings that I scheduled, people didn't show up. It was really, really frustrating. So had I have it over to do again, um, I would have gone to a less generic place than Craigslist to find those customers. I would have gone to a place where parents hang out online, because that's really hard to find. Um, and I would have started kind of lurking in those forums and answering questions where I could about their kids struggling in math and, and gathering some data. And I would have got a couple of things out of this. It would have, first off, strengthened that relationship right away um, so that I'm not an anonymous person that's asked for their help. They have at least seen me online. I have a bit of a connection with them. I would have gotten some free customer development. I would have seen what their pain points are and how they, they talked about them. Um, just by nature of being on that forum, and then I'd also be knowing how to ask. So that's framing the verbiage of how exactly you're going to ask for their help, but also the logistics of do you need to send this request to the forum manager first? Things like that. Um, so, like I said, you, you don't need um, to do all of this. You can, the incentives has worked for me in the past, but if you if you want this free customer development beforehand, and if you don't have a budget to, to use an incentive, then um, think real hard about not only where you're going to find your customers, but who they are. Um, okay, so now that you very broadly have a sense of where to find your customers, and you're starting to build that relationship, and you've asked, and people have gladly, altruistically, said that they will be willing to help you, you want to schedule with them. And it, Traditional methods of um, scheduling are, are, are perfectly valid. You could just say, hey, do you have some time next week? Thanks so much for agreeing to meet with me. And then you can do the whole back and forth of, yeah, next week's fine, anytime after five. Oh, wait, Wednesday is not going to work for me. And then, you know, the whole rigmarole of, of doing that scheduling the traditional way, but there's a better way to do it. 
um, using some scheduling tools online. And just like the meeting tools, I can't tell you exactly which tool. There's actually a, a, a forerunner in my own mind for these tools, but actually when I, the last couple of days I've talked to some other people who have really good ideas for other scheduling tools that they like and love. So just like the meeting tools, I'm gonna go through the things that um, are important for me. When thinking about scheduling tools, once again, user-friendly. This is your first introduction to the, to the customer outside of that forum, so make sure that it leaves a good impression for them. Clear time zones. There are some tools that are so much nicer than others at making it abundantly clear that you're going to be meeting tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific and not Eastern where they are, or vice versa. Um, Data privacy laws are international, um, particularly in Europe, I've found they're a little more strict than they are here in the States, so just make sure that the tool you're using complies with data privacy laws. Um, and flexible choices, I recognize that not all of us have the time to devote our whole day to customer development, so you're most likely gonna be blocking off some time. And if you do, not only um, provide as, many, as much choice in scheduling as you can to your customers, but make sure that it fits in with your country customer's culture and time zone. Um, so for the math tutoring company, I was talking to parents. And for most of the world, right after work is not a bad time to meet, you know, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. But for parents, it's a really big hassle. Um, so just take the time to think for a second about who your customer is and, and, and allow for those uh, flexible choices for your customer in particular. I've seen people use SurveyMonkey to do this scheduling. I haven't done it myself because it seems a little bit of a pain to kind of set out all of those choices and, and set the settings on that particular question so that each customer only chooses one time slot and only chooses, and only one customer chooses that time slot. Um, but I've seen other people do it and it works and it's free. You can book.me is my favorite tool right now, um, the, from choosing the time zone to choosing the time slot, it's just very user friendly. So that's why I like you can call that me. After you've scheduled with your customers, I always send out um, an email, and that's just so that all, the, all of the information a customer has is in one place. So tell them when you're gonna be meeting, spell out the month, because in case you didn't know, and I didn't know until I moved to Germany, but the rest of the world flips their month and date. So just spell out the months so that it's abundantly clear. Include their time zone, include the um, universal time as well so that they're absolutely clear <laughs> when you're gonna be meeting. Include the direct link that you're gonna be using, what they need to attend, and for those customers that um, are just really anxious to meet with you, and some of them do exist, um, they're gonna preemptively email you and say, how do I use this WebEx thing? Um, so just include the test meeting in there for those uh, customers so that they're a little bit more comfortable as they come onto the meeting tool with you. So we've talked about meeting with your customers, finding them, scheduling with them, and the last thing I want to leave you with is that I'm, I want to implore you as, as well as practicing to plan all of this ahead of time. There are so many things that are out of your control, especially in a startup, um, that you don't want the things that are in your control to trip you up. So as Eisenhower said, plans are worthless, but planning is everything. So just write down all of the words that you intend to, to say from the forum to, to the um, first email invite to your script to the greeting you're going to use and, um, instead of just jumping into your questions. Not because you're going to use every one of those words, but because planning it backwards to forwards is going to, to make sure that you've, you don't uh, run into those problems that were avoidable uh, at the end. Okay, I've talked a lot about particularly uh, customer development online. And I would have loved to spend days <laughs> talking about customer development in general and the questions you should ask and screening surveys and there's so much to cover on customer development and usability tests. Um, but do take a look at my website. There's a, a big button there now that I put a lot of references to 
um, the tools that I use and why I use them, and, and just some great references on blog posts about talking to your customers. Um, and I want to end by saying that the conference organizers here at Lean Startup, they've been really diligent about finding speakers that are going to give you some actionable data. And you're going to go home on Monday, and you're going to be totally pumped about everything you learned, and then 90% of what you're going to learn is going to go into a drawer marked, we should do this one day. So I'm going to implore you to do it on Monday. Take one little design decision, one assumption about your customers that's just been kind of eaten at your brain, and put together an online customer development research project, and you're going to make a lot of mistakes, and then do it a second time. And then by the third time, you're going to have a repeatable process so that you can continuously learn, so you can learn a little bit faster. And isn't that what Lean Startup is all about? Thank you. So we have some time, um, a little nine minutes, and I, so I wanted to ask, does anybody have questions um, about remote online customer development or customer development in general, usability studies? Yeah. When you do user research, you do uh, you observe customers and their behavior. When, uh, you know, uh, it's not, if you ask, they, they may not tell the truth, right? So there's more value in observing than asking. Yeah. So what we covered today was mainly uh, development in terms of uh, you know talking to the customers and asking customers. But what about observing customers without really uh, getting into a conversation with them. Are there any tools to do that? Yeah. Yeah, so um, really any of the screen sharing tools that I talked about are, are very great to, um, to do that observation. So yes, you're going to miss some of the body language. But in my experience, and I've tried it both ways, um, I, I actually don't require a webcam out of my users anymore when I do user research. It's nice to have it. Um, but Looking at where their mouse goes um, on that screen sharing tool is is really useful. Kind of, they might be talking and thinking out loud and saying, "Oh, so this looks really awesome and great," and you're just asking them to complete a form, and their mouse is like, "I don't know where the button is," um, or that first person that place that they go to look for the button is really um, something that is going to um, give you a lot of value. So if their, their mask is up into the right, when the button's down is the left, then you know you got a problem. But, you know, what you're saying is you're not sharing a camera, so the customer knows that you're observing, ah, right? Yeah. Is there some tool which, uh, uh, you know, where uh, you can at random uh, see uh, some of your users, maybe just their screen, not their faces, <laughs> uh, because that may not be possible legally. So just the screen so that uh, you know, you know uh, that he's confused or he's dwelling at a point for long or yeah. the way he is navigating. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so um, what you're talking about is um, what we call in the industry unmoderated usability studies. So that's where you, um, there's a number of ways you can do it. There's um, some websites, one that comes to mind is Crazy Egg, um, that just really records all of your website um, like interactions. Mm -hmm. like Clicktail is another one of them. Um, and then the other option is the, um, the kind of the more lead through um, way where you give basically email. It's a little more complicated than that, but you give the user some questions and they go through it. And they, there's options depending on the tool that user um, Usability, what is it? I'm, I'm completely blanking on the tool, but like the big user, user testing, usertesting.com. Um, and that has a lot of options for the unmoderated. And so it, if you Google unmoderated usability testing, you'll find a lot of tools. And I think I actually have references to that on my site. If I don't, I'm gonna put it out there. Um, but what I would caution against is that for 
the choose what research method you're using very carefully. So unmoderated testing like that is going to be really um, useful for qualitative, or sorry, quantitative feedback. So if you want to find out how long on average all of my users take to do a, a certain task, unmoderated is fantastic, especially online you can get literally hundreds of people to go through that task and get a good average of what the task time is. But if you're trying to figure out why and the motivations behind what they're doing, then you want to be moderated. You want to, yes, you're going to provide, a, there's, it's unavoidable to, to give a little bit of bias, confirmation bias and things like that in um, the questions that you ask and the fact that they know that they're being um, watched. But you're, you're trying to get into the head of the customer, and when you're trying to get into the head of the customer, you want to be able to ask those follow-up questions. And if you're doing it offline, if, you're, if it's unmoderated, so you're not in there, all you're seeing is that they're going up and to the right, which for that particular use case, if everybody goes up and to the right to look for the button, that's unmoderated has answered the question for you. But if you're if you're trying to figure out what's affecting conversion rate and, and is my copy right, then you're not going to get those kind of answers from the unmoderated. Did that answer your question? Perfect. Um, Any other questions? Yeah, do you have a specific tool you recommend for mobile app testing versus just a web, web testing? Good question. Um, unfortunately, because of the way that uh, mobile operating systems work, it's not as easy as just picking up a screen sharing program like it is on a PC or Mac. And I've been searching for a long time on how to do that. There are some unmoderated tools available, um, but there's nothing yet that you can um, live stream unless you use um, their proprietary browser. So you're asking the customer to download a new browser so that you can um, see, you can capture the screen um, using that particular browser or you add an SDK into your app if you're building an app. Um, and that, both of those kinds of tools are relatively new onto the scene. Um, so there's not, not a single one that I can recommend because honestly I haven't used any of them yet, um, I'm, I'm hesitant to ask my users to download things. You can use emulators. You can use emulators. Em emulators, um, yes. There's some technical difficulties with that, and, and um, something with jailbreaking your phone, not jailbreaking your phone, but um, that's the technological term. Provisioning, things like that. It's, it, it gets a little bit complicated. Are there specific questions that you would recommend more in the remote version versus the in-person version? Are there things that you want to stay away from uh, in terms of asking customers so you get the right type of answers? Yeah, the short answer is no, not really. Uh, the, the, the questions really aren't going to change because hopefully you're, um, you're not leading the witness and all of those things with whether or not you're doing it in person or online. Okay, so um, I just wanted to say one last thing. Um, I love you can book at me. I'm not affiliated with them, um, but they found out how much I love them, and so they want to share the love with you guys, and they have a special offer. Um, so if you want to email them um, and just mention my name and the Link Startup Conference, they will give you, I think it's like three months premium. Um, it's a free tool, but they have like a premium offering that um, they want to give for you. Hmm? You can book me. Yep. And then the last thing is that if you have any burning questions, if you want an accountability partner in doing your customer development, if you want somebody that you can just bounce ideas off of about what questions to ask and what tools to use and how to find your customers, um, I'm doing, I'm launching a new personal trainer program for customer development and user research. Um, I have cards up here if you're interested. There's a special offer available for you as well. Um, so thank you so very much um, for listening and enjoy the rest of the conference.